People keep asking if I'm back, and I haven't really had an answer. But now, yeah, I'm thinking I'm back. Born again means you are walking away from sin. You are done with it. That what God desires is more important than what you desire. this time publicly today just to say thank you um i appreciate you let's get to work in the book of genesis chapter 41 that's where we'll be today um i'm excited about this word i'm excited about god gracing us today um father it is it is through your power through your grace and through your love that we are here that we are not consumed by your wrath but god but your love for us in that you sent your son Jesus to die for us is so overwhelming that we are here today to have yet another chance to draw closer to you. God, we, we are in our human selves not worthy, but you count us as worthy, and I'm grateful for that. Today, as we go through your word, open the eyes and the ears of your people to realize that we are yet sinners who are saved by grace. And that you are drawing us ever so closer to you through your word, through messages like this that will show us who you are. We honor you for, for all that you do, and we're grateful for all that you will do. It is in Jesus' name I simply pray. Amen and amen. If, if you have your Bibles, and I hope you do, Genesis chapter 41, and we're going to read verses 41 through 43. That's going to be our text for the day, and then I'll move around a little bit, and I, I promise to, to keep you on on task um, as we go forward. Genesis chapter 41 and verse 41 through 43 simply says this, and Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Pharaoh took his signet ring from his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck and he made him to ride in his second chariot, and they called out before him, bow the knee. Thus, he set him over all the land of Egypt. Have you ever asked yourself, and I've done this so much in these last five years, how did I get here? How did I get to this place? How did I get to this stage in life? That's one of the things that, you know, we seem to kind of get in these cycles of life. And in those cycles of life, you wake up, you go to work, you come home, you eat, you go to sleep. And then the next thing you know, years have passed and you don't know how you got to where you are. Yeah. And so one thing that I'm, I'm grateful of is that even though I've been in this cycle of life, God has seemed to slow down time so that I could see him working in my life. And that's just one of the things it takes a lot of patience. It takes a lot of diligence. It takes a lot of slowing down and saying, I'm not going to go here or I'm not going to do this, but I just want to sit and I just want to ponder. I want to think about the goodness of God. And so in these last five years, I've taken time to realize it's been by the grace of God that I've been in this place. And, and some days I beat myself up and some days I wore myself out other days I was too busy to think and other days I was so overwhelmed that I couldn't figure out how I got here. But then I saw this story of Joseph and, and Joseph is one of those stories when we read the story of Joseph, we tend to look at it as, as one who overcame many obstacles and the ultimate goal of overcoming those obstacles was success. And, and, and in our minds, we want to be successful. We tend to also read scriptures in the Old Testament uh, with the, with, as allegories, so, uh, with hidden meanings to fit our modern day issues. I wanna, I wanna challenge us today because I've always, I've always looked at scripture a certain way, but in, 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 my, in my time with just with God and life and all these stage changes, I've gotten to see the scriptures in a different way. In truth, we read everything in scripture and it's meant to point us to the redemptive work of Christ. 
That's it. That's all. Not success, not Bentleys, not money, not bigger houses. Back to the redemptive work of Christ. Here's a newsflash. God has a plan for your life. There are many challenges and obstacles that you and I will encounter. This is being done not to give you the look and the feel of success, but I want you to remember this. You, your success, your failures, and anything you overcome is meant to show you the redemptive work of Jesus the Christ. Now, I want, I want to take a look at a dreamer. We know, we know Joseph to be a dreamer. And I want to look at the experience of a dreamer and see how life can be when God's plans override our own. I haven't said this in five years, so forgive me for saying being so emotional, but for the time that is ours to share, I want to speak from the topic, when dreams come true. There are three things that I want to share with you to, in order to understand when dreams come true. In the book of Genesis chapter 37, if you turn back just a few pages, Genesis 37 verses 3 through 5, uh, it, it says this. Uh, I want to make sure I'm in the right place. Yeah, it says this in Genesis uh, 37 verses 3 through 5. Now Israel loved Joseph more than any of his sons because he was the son of his old age and he made him a robe of many colors. But when his brothers saw that their father loved him more than all his brothers, they hated him and could not speak peacefully to him. Now Joseph had a dream. And when he told it to his brothers, they hated him even more. Joseph, this, this young cat, he, he had three different pairs of dreams three different pairs of dreams. The first dream, dream number one, happened in Genesis 37, verses six and verse seven. He said this, hear this dream I have dreamed. Behold, we were binding sheaves in the field and behold, my sheep arose and stood upright and behold, your sheaves gathered around it and bowed down to my sheep. That's dream number one. Dream number two, Genesis 37, verses nine, and 11, uh, then he dreamed another dream and told it to his brothers. Behold, I have dreamed another dream. Behold, the sun and the moon and 11 stars bowed down to me. And in verse 11, I want to move down. It says, and his brothers were jealous of him, but his father kept the saying in mind. In, in an understanding when dreams come true, remember you're going to have defining moments. As you as you look at your life, there's a set path of things that will happen. We started off when Joseph began to be hated by his brothers. They didn't just hate on him. Like, like most preachers are preaching today, it ain't about your haters. It's something that got your haters started. I'm not focusing on the people who hate me, but I want to know how did I get to this place? How did I get here? Joseph's father loved him more than all of his brothers. And it was evident to them. The first pair of dreams that Joseph interpreted, these first pair of dreams were personal in nature. The first pair of dreams involved Joseph and his immediate family. The first pair of dreams were uh, obviously missing the big picture. These first pair of dreams were missing the details uh, 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 which led, excuse me, to the big picture. The first pair of dreams were it designed ultimately by God to move Joseph to the next staging area of his life. This per first pair of dreams landed Joseph in a pit. He should have been killed, but they had a better thought. Let's just put him in a pit and then we're going to sell him to some, to some slave owners. Many, many people I find despise the pit moments in our lives. We don't know that it's often those pit moments which put us on the path to our purpose. Hallelujah. When, 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 when dreams come true, not only, Miss Connie, will you have 
defining moments, but you will have moments of growth. In Genesis chapter 40, Genesis chapter 40 and verse 7 and 8, I'll give you time to get there, but I'll go ahead and start reading. So he asked Pharaoh's officers who were with him in custody in his master's house, why are your faces downcast today? They said to him, we have had dreams and there is no one to interpret them. And Joseph said to them, do not interpretations belong to God? Please tell them to me. Now, I want to pause right here and park for a few seconds because the first time Joseph had a dream, it was personal. And when it came out, when he, when he shared the dream, it offended some people. But here we realize Joseph has now gone through some stuff. Joseph has, has told his brothers the dream. The brother's brother said, I'm going to kill him. No, don't kill him. Put him in the pit. They put him in the pit. They sold him to slavery. Sold him into slavery. He ended up in Potter's house. Don't you see a pattern here? He was loved by his father. He was elevated in the next level. He was loved by Potiphar, but then here come Potiphar's wife and she go to grabbing at him and he runs, but he leaves his coat. And so because he did that, Potiphar put him in prison. But what you missed if you don't read scripture is that when he was in prison, he was elevated again to a place where he was overseeing and looking out for the prisoners. And now here we are, excuse me, I'm getting excited. Here we are in verse 40, in chapter 40, and now he's in charge of the prisoners and the prison guards and the warden say, Joseph can handle that. Uh, Joseph looks at Pharaoh's officers and he says, why are your faces downcast? They said to him, we've had dreams and there is no one to interpret them. Here is the growth. The first time Joseph had a dream, the first two dreams were now personal in nature, and, and he had big picture, but was missing details. He realized you can have a big picture uh, personality, a big picture perspective, but if you don't seek God for the details, you're going to offend some other folks. The second pair of dreams uh, that Joseph interpreted incurred, occurred while he was in prison. This second pair of dreams involved helping others. Ironically, the first pair of dreams ultimately involved helping others, but Joseph had to mature to that level. Amen. Dream Amen. number three, Genesis chapter 40, verse 9 through 11. So the chief cupbearer told Joseph his dream and said to him, in my dream, there was a vine before me, and on the vine there were three branches, and as soon as it budded, the blossoms shot forth, and the clusters ripened into grapes. Pharaoh's cup was in my hand, and I took the grapes, and I pressed them into Pharaoh's cup, and placed the cup into Pharaoh's hand. Joseph said, I, I, I hear from God. Here's the interpretation. Interpretation. Relax. In three days, Pharaoh's going to put you back in the place where you were before you came here. Okay, so now here, here comes dream number four. Dream number four, this isn't Joseph's dream. This is someone else's dream that only God can interpret. In verses 16 and 17 of, of chapter 40, when the chief baker saw the, that the interpretation was favorable, he said to Joseph, I also had a dream. There were three cake baskets on my head and the uppermost basket, there were all sorts of baked foods for Pharaoh, but the birds were eating it out of my basket, off my head. Joseph said, I'm not going to give you the interpretation. I'm going to ask God. He's going to give it to me. And here's the interpretation. Fellow, you need to enjoy these next three days of your life because <laughs> Pharaoh's going to hang you. See, everybody's not going to like when dreams come true. This is the point. Every dream that comes true is not a good perspective. Every dream that comes true does not work in your faith. The church, forgive us, has lied to you. It is not your season. It is not your time. You're going to have to go through some things. You're going to have to struggle. You're going to have to be without. Why? Because God has a plan for your life that the church and the, the, the people who are in leadership are not in touch and in tune with God to hear and tell you clearly. Preach, when dreams come true, 
Yeah. You will have defining moments. Not only will you have defining moments, you will have moments of growth. And lastly, you will have moments, not just one, moments of clarity. In, in verse four, in chapter 41. Come on now. Verse, verse 41 through 43, this is our home scripture. And, 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 and Pharaoh said to Joseph, see, I have set you over all the land of Egypt. Then Joseph took his signet ring from off his hand and put it on Joseph's hand and clothed him in garments of fine linen and put a gold chain about his neck. And he made him to ride in the second chariot. And they called out before him, bow the knee. Thus sent him over all the land of Egypt. The third pair of dreams put Joseph in the presence of someone with power who could change his life. That's what we all want to have. Huh. Most of us get excited at this point in the text because we internally wish we could catch a break like that. Many of us read this text and find our own reason to rejoice because if he did it for Joseph, he can do it for me. This wasn't a mama, I made it moment. I believe Joseph's dream declared, in fact, this moment, this is the moment, instead of rejoicing for Joseph, we should get down on our knees and pray for him. Yeah, yeah. Pray for people who are in the same position that Joseph is in. I, I'll pray. Right. Let's go on down. Verse 45. Verse 45 says, and Pharaoh calls Joseph's name Zephanath uh, Panea. I always mess that up. And he gave him in marriage to Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, priest of On. So Joseph went over out over the land of Egypt. Here is the moment where does this sound like the mama I made it moment? Here we are. And now Joseph, a covenant son, name has been changed to, to a, a pagan name. Let's go on down to verse 50. Before the year of famine, uh, two sons were born to Joseph. Asenath, the daughter of Potiphar, a priest of On, bore to them to him. So Joseph called the name of the firstborn Manasseh, for he said, God has made me forget all the hardships of my father's house. The, the name of the second he called Ephraim, for God has made me fruitful in the land of my afflictions. Does that sound like a mama I made it moment? Come on now. No, Joseph is saying, I've been put in this place. I had a dream that I would be here, but I didn't know the outcome of the dream would not be as favorable as the dream felt when I first heard. Joseph, the son of the covenant, he's now second in command to a pagan leader. His name was changed to a pagan name. But in all of that, he remembered his God. How do I know that? Because he named his sons Hebrew names. Uh, he, he said, the first God has made me forget the fact that my brothers threw me in a pit because my father loved me more than them. He said, my, 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 my firstborn son reminds me that all of the negative things that I faced in my past, God has made me forget all of those things. Preach, Doug. Preach, Pastor. In the, in the second son, for God has made me fruitful. Everything that Joseph touched was a fruitful event. Everything that God allowed him to uh, 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 encounter was something that he overcame with strength and with power and with wisdom. Because the third set of dreams was not Joseph's dream. It was not the cup baker or the or the, or the cup baker or the or the cup bearer or the baker. This was the Pharaoh's dream. And Pharaoh had a dream and he saw seven uh, 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 healthy cows and seven lean cows and the seven lean cows came and swallowed up the seven healthy. And Joseph said, I know what that is. God is, has matured me through some processes and he's allowed me to understand that yeah. you're going to have uh, seven years of plenty. 
followed by seven years of famine. But if you put somebody in place and who can manage some things and you put enough aside, you'll have enough for the seven years of famine. So that's how we got to this place. Joseph, he had some defining moments. This, this moment with, 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 with Pharaoh was proof that he had some moments of, 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 of growth. This, this in, in, instance with Pharaoh was proof that Joseph had some moments of clarity. Joseph's dreams came true. Joseph was elevated. Joseph received positions. Pharaoh gave the command just like his dream. Bow the knee. But it doesn't sound like a mama I made it moment. In Genesis chapter 45, this is, this is what really opens my eyes to the grace and the mercy and the power of a loving God. That as the famine rose, Joseph's family, the ones who threw him in a pit, the ones who wanted to kill him, yeah, the yeah, ones who yeah. wanted him dead alone to fake his death and his father thought that he had lost a son, they had to come to the place where Joseph was. And, and, and here is the moment in, 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 in Genesis 45, verse four and five. I told him we were gonna move around a little bit. So Joseph said to his brothers, come near to me, please. And they came near. And he said to them, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold in the slavery. I want to stop right there. Have you ever had to face your yesterday? Oh, man. How did you do? Most of us, when we face our yesterday, haven't dealt with yesterday, so we can't get to tomorrow because yesterday is still holding on. But Joseph had some reckonings with himself and with his God, and because of that, he looked at his yesterday with forgiveness, yes, with Lord. mercy, it, with grace, Say without it. holding yesterday over yesterday's head. Amen. He said, I'm your brother Joseph that you sold into slavery. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me here to preserve your life. Wow. How did we get here? How did we get to this place? I look at my life. You look at your life. And I question God every day. I've had people in my ear, Oz, who tell me, you know, you should be, or why don't you go? And I have to realize this is my, 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 my foundational moment. This is the moment that we have to be settled within ourselves. It's not where I think I ought to be. It's not about where I feel I ought to be. It is where I know God wants me to be. I yes. know that this path looks like the path I should be on. Yeah. But if God didn't orchestrate me to walk down that path, no matter how hard I try, I'm never going to get down that path. Say it, preacher. Say Here it. we are. Joseph is with his brothers. We know that Joseph was a son of Israel. But remember when I told you, you, your successes and your failures, well, on the other hand, Joseph, his successes and his failures, all, all that he had to overcome ultimately pointed to the redemptive work of Jesus the Christ. By the time Joseph's dream came true, remember, he experienced the pit. He experienced being accused by Potiphar's wife. He spent over two years in prison. And he had also, after that, been given a position, the second in command under Pharaoh alone, ultimately to serve those who misused him. 
Wow. You don't get to any level in life without going back to serve amen. where you were abused. Yes, amen. You don't get to any level in life and there has to be some strength on the inside of you to go back and say, I forgive what was done. I forgive what was said. I am now better than I used to be. Yeah. And my goal is not to harm you, but to help you. And this is what blows my mind when I read this scripture. Because this is the last time we hear of Joseph. The next time Joseph is mentioned in scripture, there was a Pharaoh who rose who knew not Joseph. There was a Pharaoh who came into power who did not know Joseph. But Joseph saved his family. And Joseph kind of faded off into the past. But there was a king who rose from one of his brothers who was saved, Judah. And out of the lineage of Judah rose King David. And out of the lineage of David came a man who is now the king of kings and the Lord said, of lords. Said, teach it, and teach so that. when I think about Joseph's story, I don't look at it from the perspective of my success. When I look at Joseph's story, I look at it from the, the point that I'm put on this earth for one purpose, and that is to send somebody down the path that they can find Christ and Christ alone. Amen. Amen. So my challenge to oh, you hallelujah. is say it, say to it. look at your life moving forward, not for what you're going to gain or what you're going to get here on earth. Because all of that will burn away. You can't take it into heaven. I've, 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 come, I've become so in love with the simple things in life. After, after a good meal, give me some cookies and a popsicle. I'm like a kid. But I'm grateful because it's now the simple things that mean the most. And if I can do anything to help you find Christ, that is my pleasure in life. When dreams come true, ladies and gentlemen, they won't always work out in your favor, but they will work out in the favor of God who we serve. Thank you.